Okay. So, you want to make sure to do your untangle mandala that you first have gone through and created some type of board or squares of different zentangles that you've completed. Let me put something like that underneath this so you can see it better. Okay. So, went through and I have different pages that I have different things on. I don't necessarily have them all on one page. Um, you could have them all on one page, but a minimum of 12. Four of them should be from last week's folder, 0904, and those materials in there. The others you could watch the Zentangle video that's in the file folder, or you could Google some, you could make up some of your own, but you need to have a minimum of 12. Now, that's a minimum of 12 that you've done well. Okay, taking your time, doing well, this is your practice. You'll notice I also practiced with different black pens because I wanted to know which one I wanted to use. Okay? The other thing that I have to do is have different thumbnail sketches that I've done. Trying to figure out, I have some more somewhere else, trying to figure out what it is, how I want mine, um, mandala to come out. They don't have to be full size. Okay? Then, let's see if I can get this out of here. Then what I did was I created my mandala. Okay? Another thumbnail sketch, even though it's big, it's a thumbnail sketch, okay? I needed to figure out where the middle was and where my sections were going to be to do it. It took me a little while to figure things out, okay? Well, let's move that over there. So I figured out this would be my center, and I wanted to put these triangles in there. And so I needed to split my areas better. So they basically split, and there's like an upside down triangle where they split. Ooh, I did that one wrong right there. Let me show this right here. That's not real. Okay, so I have the different sections so it would all figure out when I copy them, okay? So if I were going to look at this, I'm trying to figure out what it is I'm going to copy. I need to copy one of these areas, just one, because what it does is duplicates. This isn't perfect, of course, because this is my, um, my first, my sketch. This is my thumbnail sketch. But I need to do this because what I'm going to do when I'm trying to make mine perfect, so to speak, is I'm just going to use one of those areas. Let me find a piece of paper. Now, I went ahead and used this when I did mine. It could be folded, but I did this. 
So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my idea, one section, and I'm going to do one section of my actual one that I plan to use. I'm going to draw lightly because I don't want it to be there in case I mess up. I'll draw a little bit darker where you guys can actually see. But basically, I need a circle in the middle. I'm going to add the spiral later. So I need a circle in the middle. And I'm doing the whole circle even though I really don't need that right now. I do need the outside circle. And I really don't need the whole outside circle. Now if you cut it out, of course you got to cut out the whole outside circle. Okay? So now, I also have squares up in this area. They go in an area that is about like that. Okay? So, I do want to put my little crosshairs in here. That just helps me kind of keep things lined up. And I'm going to do this one block right here. Okay? Just this one block. Let me do that as something that's a little wider. Let me do this. One block. And this design needs to be spot on what I'm doing for this one block. Okay? So I've got the one block and I need to do my design exactly how I want it neat and everything based off of my um, thumbnail sketch, my idea sketch. So this needs to be there. Okay? That's part of my circle. Then, as I'm looking here, I need the outside line. Okay? I need this inside line to go by. What else do I need? I have a line that comes from here to here. So, I'm going to use a straight edge to make that line to make sure I make it straight. So I'm putting that line and then I have one that goes from this cross to here. Okay. I also have a cross there. So I'm going to draw it in. I have a cross that leads up here. So I'm going to draw it in. Alright. So I've got this. Got this here, this here. I'm missing my squares. I want to make my squares square. I could actually use a ruler. Okay. I want my crosses to be crosses, and I know I'm going to have a cross here. Okay. I also know I'm going to have a cross. Over here, I have the edge of it. This is the line, and this is the edge. And there's a box, or square, in between. I need to get them to the exact right size and everything, and done as neatly as possible. So, I may need to erase when I'm drawing this. I may need to make my lines darker where I can see them show up. But I need this one section as perfect as possible. Because this is what I'm going to use to get everything else in order. I don't see an eraser. Hold on. Okay. I don't think my squares are very squared. 
So I'm going to try to clean that up some. I probably should make a template from a piece of cardstock. It might make it easier. that better. Okay, so I've got my one area that I'm going to copy. If I wanted to do half or a quarter, I would design that whole quarter, or I would design that whole half. And I could take it over. Now that I've got that done, you can see all I have on here right now is the one quarter. That quarter I'm going to use all around my whole circle. Okay? When I'm doing when I do this, my overall design. Okay? I used the one quarter to make it. So if I fold this along the lines, you can see, be real careful and fold real well, make sure things are straight. Okay, you can even cut it out. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. See if I have a pair of scissors. So now, either way you want to do things, whether you want to fold and transfer, you could have folded and transferred. If you want to use the white box type method and you have a circle that you're going to draw on first, you will take a piece of paper, lay it over the top. Draw your circle. Lightly. Once again, you can do the same thing by doing the transfer method where we fold it. I like to make sure that I have what I call these crosshairs in here because they help me keep things straightened out because I know I need three of these for those crosshairs. So then I can take this, I can lay it down, I could tape it if I have trouble with it moving. Sometimes you have lots of trouble with it moving, but if you tape, you be real careful when you take the tape on and off. I think I will tape. get it to stay still. Okay? So I can line this up and now I need to be really neat. I need to make sure that my pencil is sharp. So I'm going to make sure it's sharp with the pencil because this is the time that's very important to start having lines very straight everything exactly and precise. Okay? So I've got this lined up. Now, I'm just going to trace the lines I need. And if I wanted to use a ruler again, I could. And those little guidelines I did on the original piece, if I don't need them here, 
I'm not going to transfer them. Okay? So I got the first piece. I'm going to twist my paper. I can also go ahead and when I finish transferring things, I can go back and make sure that I look at any imperfections and straighten things out. Very important. Remember those crosshairs I said I wanted to make sure I put there? That little point is extremely important. And I'm drawing lightly where I can erase and fix anything that I need to fix. But I'm getting down my piece on the paper. Okay? So, basically, keep on going. Got another piece. Now I'd go all the way around. And then come back and look at anything, straighten things out, use a ruler where I need to use a ruler. Look at that crooked line. I definitely won't, don't want to trace a line that looks like that. Okay. So now I have a fourth of my design done. Oops. Look at, I left out some pieces. Turn to the side. I need to go back and put that cross in. And I need to go back here and put that cross in. Okay. And keep on going. And then I go back and straighten everything up and add my spiral in the middle. Okay. Don't call it. Okay. And make sure that I have all my, um, don't start putting your entangles on until you have all your entangles done, all of your little pattern completely clean and nice. So this is a whole lot more clean and nice than what I started with because I went back and cleaned it up. Okay, so a lot of cleaning up and paying attention to detail. You also need to make sure that at some point, whatever paper that you are using to do this with, that you have tried the pens and pencils that you want to use. I happen to be using this pen, okay? So if I wanted to make this Zentangle, and I need to be neater than that, so maybe I need more practice. Take it slower, I'm trying to go too fast when I'm showing you guys. But I need to practice with the pins and the colors that I'm going to use. And I need to make a decision on what those are going to be. I need to see, is it going to work well together? Okay. So maybe I think that I would like to use those some. I need to make sure that I have some of the Zentangles that I'm going to use on here. Because if I don't, then how am I going to know? If when I do them, it's going to turn out looking nice. Okay? So, I need to make sure how that's going to work and if they bleed together or they look good. Okay? Whatever colors, you need to use them together, try them together. Figure out what colors you're using. Why are you using them? Okay? Why are you using them? This is outside line. Not good. Okay? This 
third colony. Okay? This one. Good colony. It didn't glue together. I've got other pins that might or may not work as well. Okay? We need to figure out what colors. This is my color plan and test. When you figure out final colors to use, you should have them in a box right there inside some zoom tables. sure that whatever you're using you've tried okay main thing is Those are things you should have be working on today. Do not start inking or coloring. Final so fast five. 